On today's episode, I am going to talk about my top buys for this week and also some other companies that I find attractive right now. So let's get started. All right, so if you guys don't know my channel, my name is Jose Naharo and I am a long-term investor. I put money into my account every week and every week it depends the amount of money. It can be somewhere between 100 or 400 or 500 dollars a week um this week i put a little bit over 400 dollars and most of that money um this week actually went to two companies facebook and google and i did mention i did have a video earlier this week i think i posted it last saturday where i mentioned how i still thought google and facebook were undervalued especially after this whole overreaction uh, of the advertisement business um so i definitely picked up some shares some extra shares right i do already have position in them and now with my 400 it was about 440 dollars that went into my account this week the two I picked were Facebook and Google and throughout this episode I'm going to talk about those two companies and why I am still bullish in them. And then after that, unfortunately like I mentioned, right, I do not have unlimited funds. But if I had more funds, obviously I would purchase more companies. And I'm going to talk about those other businesses that I wouldn't have mind purchasing this week. And my whole purpose of this is to just show different businesses that are out there right now. Um, remember, that I am nowhere near a professional, so none of this is advice. Um, but I do think it's always good to have an extra pair of eyes taking a look at some other, other businesses. And if you guys have any that you would have purchased this week, feel free to let me know on the comments. Actually, let me know in the comments right now, so maybe I can take a look at them for next week. All right, so the first one that I purchased was Facebook. And Facebook, I think, was my major, one of my major buys for, for this week at about the 400 and, and something dollars that went into my account. 300 went into Facebook. And if you guys don't know, I am a big person that's into, uh, into fractional shares. Fractional shares, I think, is the most amazing thing for any long-term investor with a small account. And when I mean small account, I mean an account that is, uh, that is right now sitting below $100,000. Um, let me just pull up my account real quick so you guys can see mine. So here's my account right now sitting about a $42,000 and this is actually I'm, I'm pretty happy to see this um, at the beginning of the year it started close to 22 so in the overall in the past six months six seven months I have been adding like I mentioned I add to my account on a weekly basis so that has helped me grow this account but I've also had some great returns right now with the overall stock market I did purchase I, I did enter a lot during the big drop um, which obviously now looking at 2020 it, it is it, it was a great entry point for me to put that extra cash to work um so right now right even though 42 to many might seem to a lot a lot to others it might seem like a little right it's all about perspective throughout it um but even though with this type of account i'm still a huge fan of fractional share it allows me to enter positions without actually right imagine me having to open up amazon with over two thousand dollars right that's that's already close to just five percent of my of my account in just one share and I, I prefer to go into monetary value opposed to share value so I, I do a lot of fractional shares even with this type of account and I like I said I think for anyone even people within a hundred thousand dollar account fractional shares is the best way to diversify your account and if you guys want to see more about of my account I add, I do have it on my discord channel which is free to anybody that wants to join I, I post it there and um, so if you guys want to feel free um, and I'll also probably do a video on it later later this um, later this month so right in the past five days uh, on Saturday I released a video saying that I thought Facebook was undervalued and everything was an overreaction stock price on 2000 on monday when i did purchase was around the low 200 levels 209 and right now is sitting at 233 facebook is a company that i want to become one of my biggest position size and if you guys don't know right if you're first time listening i am in about 30 to 40 positions i i, I enjoy doing this this is what what i i i enjoy doing on an everyday basis so for me having 30 or 40 accounts 30 to 40 stocks is, is no biggie for me because I, I thoroughly enjoy it another thing is i know i could be wrong so by knowing i could be wrong the best way to diversify myself and to protect myself from from the risk is to hold is to never hold one account one portfolio being such a huge portion of, of my of my portfolio 
Um, the, the most I would ever get to is 10% per position. Uh, and only a few positions would ever hold that kind of level. Facebook is one that I'm, 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 I'm up right now. I am leaning to getting into that type of portfolio holding. And many people might be like, Hey, Jose, with that many positions, does it, your growth is, is probably not that big. I would definitely recommend you checking out my other videos to show how even such of my smallest portfolio, some of my smallest holdings have become some of my highest monetary value um, gain. And, and it's, it's, there's all different types of investment styles. And this is the one I prefer just due to my risk tolerance. All right. So now, now that we've seen Facebook price performance is sitting at 233, even at the moment, I still will continue to buy Facebook. The main reason I'm buying Facebook is I do no longer see Facebook as just a social media company. I do believe Facebook is moving more to a place where, where they are becoming, they are putting their hands in different markets. The first reason is e-commerce. E-commerce is one of the most bullish sentiments right now, especially with this whole COVID-19 and recently they did partner with Shopify to make their Facebook shops even more impressive and more easy to use. So uh, that is an important thing right now, especially right now with all small businesses having some form of Facebook account style. Now they can use Facebook shops to, to even put more, more e-commerce into their, into their, into their Facebook pages. That alone is pretty important. The second thing is, and and through there you can use facebook pay to to pretty much pay your pay for your goods or pay for whatever you're trying to buy the second reason is whatsapp in brazil so whatsapp in brazil now started more of a, a payment type application like similar to like paypal um venmo or any other type of cash app where you can send money money to to other other friends or to use to purchase things so they just launched it in Brazil and Brazil is one of their biggest WhatsApp. It's the number two WhatsApp user base and they're testing it out there, which I think it is pretty, pretty impressive for them to be also entering this market. So they're entering two really bullish markets, e-commerce. We can see companies like Amazon, um, Walmart, all of these that are in the e-commerce world continue to go up. They're also entering the e-payment as well. We see PayPal, we see Square, all uh, pay, PayPal, MasterCard, Visa, all of them have gone up due to this type style of e-payment material that they have, especially PayPal. So for Facebook to enter that, and them using their their current strong platform of WhatsApp, and all of this is being integrated into what they call as Facebook Pay, um, which is also being used on their e-commerce. So they're putting all their pla all all of these stuff, even though it's in different applications, in one type of main field, which I, I thought was pretty smart. The final thing I'm super bullish about a bit about Facebook is Facebook Gaming. Um, streaming platforms right now, I think, are completely undervalued. The amount of, of people streaming right now, the way the esports market is going, Facebook gaming. Um, if you guys don't know, Microsoft had a streaming platform as well. It was called Mixer. Unfortunately, Mixer did not do so well. They did have a nice, I think, 24 million. So they did have a nice amount of streamers in there, but it, it was just not seeing the growth they wanted. So Microsoft stopped there and actually they partnered up with Facebook and are bringing all those people to Facebook gaming. The only th um, three United States big streamers right now are going to be Twitch by Amazon, Google gaming by um, YouTube gaming by Google, and now Facebook gaming, which includes Microsoft and Facebook. And I think this was actually a pretty cool platform move um, and again, more of that bullish sentiment for me for Facebook, because they are in three markets that I am very, very bullish in. The first one was the e-commerce. The second one was the e-payment. And now this one is the esports. Anything with the e uh, automatically becomes bullish to me. Just kidding on that last part. And before we go any further, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up and the bell. It helps the small channel out so much. And I truly, truly appreciate the support. If you guys ever want to get in contact with me, make sure to post on the comments. I answer to every question. Um, but remember, I am not a professional. So if you guys ask me to give you recommendations, that's not something I do. I would just give my honest opinion on what I feel about it. But remember, I am not a professional and none of this is advice. Also, I am very active on Twitter and I do, like I mentioned, I have a Discord channel which has a lot of great people in there where we all communicate. A lot of us are actually becoming great friends and it's pretty cool to, to just have that type of, of environment. Um, everybody there is more of a, a, a long-term investor. So if you guys wanna come in, feel free to join. All the information 
It should be in the description. If you're listening to the podcast, it should also be in the description. Um, and finally, I just started a website. Feel free to check it out, josenaharo.com. And I am using it there to put weekly newsletters and do stock write-ups. So if you guys want to check that out, I know some people don't like to view all the videos or 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 want or just want another form of medium to to read more about stocks. That website I'm gonna start posting a lot. My recent article was on PayPal. Um, so check that out. And this Sunday will be the first newsletter. So make sure to subscribe to the newsletter. And today's episode is actually sponsored by my Discord channel. Just kidding. It, it, it's just uh, a lot of cool guys in there were, were posting their pictures for um, 4th of July of what they're cooking. So this morning, I actually woke up to my Discord channel being more of a food channel. Everybody posting pictures of what they're doing for 4th of July. Happy 4th to everybody here in the United States. Um, and look at this amazing picture of this pizza. Again, this is just what we do in this Discord channel. Obviously, just kidding. This is a one-time thing. Most of the time, we're learning about growth stocks. So feel free to check it out. All right, so let's continue back in Facebook, right? I I, I took the uh, liberty of saying why I was bullish with them. Now I want to take a look at their past growth just to make sure they, they are growing in the right direction. In 2019, Facebook grew 26% year over year. In 2018, they grew 37.35%. In 2017, they grew 47%. This is a big market cap company. Let's take a quick look. This is a market cap of $665 billion, and it's still growing at those types of levels. To me, that is impressive. The most recent year was 26% growth. Um, and especially with everything that they are going, I do think that this revenue growth is going to continue. And to me, Facebook will probably be, uh, again, not I'm no master at this, but I can honestly see Facebook having a $1 trillion market cap um, in, within the, a year or two, which to me, that is amazing returns right now from the current price. Next, if we take a look at their balance sheet, another thing I like to make sure is that the balance sheet is pretty healthy. A healthy balance sheet allows you to be able to survive during hard times. One of my most favorite things that I have I, I, I have learned and read is one cash is the most under um, it's the it's the worst performing asset ever. Right. It, cash doesn't make money for you, but cash is the most valuable asset when things hit the fan. If things start to go bad, if you have cash at hand, you don't have to worry. And that's why I like to look at a balance sheet, make sure they have a, a healthy cash to debt ratio. So Facebook at the most recent quarter reported about 36, 37 billion dollars of current investments, which is something they can convert in quick cash and about 23 billion in cash and cash equivalents. So roughly about 60 billion dollars in cash. And they only have about 10 billion dollars in non-current debt and, and about one, one billion in current debt. So about 11 billion dollars in debt in total debt and have over 60 billion dollars in cash this is one with a very very strong balance sheet um to say the least all right so the second stock that i enjoyed is google this week and another one i did purchase google right now if we take a look at the five day on monday it dropped down to 1360 dollars and it's up already about eight percent since my last video Google is another one that I am very bullish on. And today I'm going to mention why I am um, within why I'm in Google and I will continue. This is another stock that similar to Facebook, I wouldn't mind holding a huge portion of my portfolio somewhere around closer to seven to eight percent. So the first thing is Google is, is there. They're in, in all the major platforms that I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty big in esports, um, cloud cloud networks. Uh, and that's pretty much and some form of streaming platform. So first, let's take a look at the clouding market in, tw in the end of quarter four of 2019. Google was number three in the clouding market, owning about 8% of the market. The only two ahead of it are obviously the big boys, Amazon taking 33% of the market, Microsoft taking 18%, Google's taking 8%. And the next in line is IBM taking 6%. I do think Google Cloud can increase that percentage base. Um, and, and has it is a good place to to continue to grab more market share. More reasons I am bullish on Google is they are in different segments that in different segments and they are putting their hands in different types of, of businesses. For example, they are with Waymo in their automotive type automotive type um, vehicle automotive vehicle platform. 
they are in the drone service and they per they're personally just um they recently just acquired north which is a smart glasses maker um and this is something to the technology is crazy right to be able to have all the information in smart glasses similar to what you have on your phone um and to see this type of uh, technology being developed over time it it's just insane right and google is in the front runner there they have plenty of cash to buy all these small businesses and eventually maybe one of those small companies might become the next big thing and that's the big hopeful for for google um another reason i am bullish is like i mentioned they are in the streaming platform very similar to facebook they have game um youtube gaming where it's where you stream where you stream your games and they have been making a lot of big moves with their recently they did make a deal with activision where which is just blizzard world of warcraft hearthstone call of duty where youtube is the the one to have the rights to to stream all call of duty tournaments and all hearthstone tournaments which i think and an overwatch league as well which is some of the biggest e-leagues in, in the esports market right now besides just regular cloud market they have also created something called google stadia and this is cloud gaming and cloud gaming to me is the future uh it's a whole revolutionary concept for the gaming market um, and this pretty much allows you to game in any type of device from your phones to a $100 laptop instead of having crazy hardware to, to play games where now Google, Google Stadia pretty much allows, and this is something other companies have, Nvidia is another one that I'm bullish for this reason. Google Stadia has the ability to bring gaming to everyone. And I think that's actually a, a crazy concept. And one that's going to open up the gaming market to so many people that were not available back then. Now, let's just take a look at their past growth. In 2019, revenue for Google was 18%. In 2018, it was 23% year over year. And 2017 was 22.8%. This is a trillion dollar market cap company already. And look, it is still growing at strong double digits. And with the strength of cloud, with the strength of esports, and with the strength of YouTube right now, I mean, every. The amount of people I, I know now that are just using YouTube for everyday viewership has increased from what I saw a year ago. My dad, for example, now, I'm pretty sure he barely watches cable anymore. He just watches YouTube videos. And, and that's insane. And that, again, continues to, to show why I am very, very big in Google. Um, Now, if we take a look at balance sheet, Google's balance sheet, I think, is one of my favorite balance sheets. They have... 97 billion in current investment and about 20 billion in cash so close to 120 billion dollars in quick cash and they have about 16 billion in current and non-current debt in theory this company can pretty much pay off its total debt and still have about 100 billion dollars in cash ready to use ready to go buy and acquire more businesses all right so those are the two two that i bought and now i'm actually going to share three that i would have purchased if i had more funds at hand and again remember this is not advice and this is just my opinion if i had more money in my account and these are the three that i would have purchased and before i go further all of these three i have mentioned in the video i do vi I, I i do videos almost on a daily basis so if you are new, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, and I have I have honestly done a video on all three. Um, I think one of them was actually just two days ago, which I, I posted. The first holding, the first position is Celsius holding, and that's ticker C as in Charlie E L H. Uh, and this is a beverage company right now this is a very small company a market cap of 773 million dollars in the past six months this business has gone up a nice amount and even with this big jump let's say year to date year to date this is up about 150 percent and i personally still think it's undervalued to my opinion um, I can easily see this being at least a 1 million market cap. So what is Celsius? Like I mentioned, I've done previous videos. So if you guys want more in-depth or in-depth analysis on Celsius, feel free to check out those other videos. Just go to my search and I'll actually pro try to put them in the description if you guys want to learn more. So Celsius is a healthy energy drink. A lot of the guys in, in the Discord channel, Bill, Bill, Bill Brent was, was one of the guys in in the um, discord channel to actually bring this up to to the group i then decided to do analysis on it after my analysis i i, I personally liked it and a lot of people did their own due diligence and also enjoyed this business so a, a bunch of us are actually in this position 
Um, Celsius is one that is starting up. They are in big names like Target, Walmart and stuff. But the, let's take a look at their most recent earnings. In their most recent earnings, which was about a month, two months ago, revenue was up 95% compared to a year ago. So that's some crazy growth there. The other thing that I want to mention is they were just launched national wide products in Walmart at more than 1500 stores. And they expanded national wide product assortments to five flavors at more than 1300 target locations. So they're still expanding, but look, now they're launching in these big stores, retail stores like Walmart and target and uh, i i know a lot of the people like i said all the discord channels have gone out and tried to taste the, the beverage themselves and a lot of them are enjoying it uh so now let's take a look at past performance in 2019 this revenue grew 42 percent year over year in 2018 it grew 45 percent year over year and in 2017 it grew 58 percent year over year i do believe now with the partnerships with target and walmart this strong revenue growth is going to continue um, if we take a look at their most recent balance sheet, their most recent balance sheet shows that they have about $20 million in cash and they really don't have any really crazy debt. They have about, about $9 million in current debt. So if they, they, if they pay off their total debt, they still have about $10 million in cash. And to me, that's pretty good com in compared to ratio of what they have, right? Numerically wise, obviously we just saw Google who had a hundred billion dollars, but remember this is not a Google. Um, so we're taking a look at ratios. So they have almost a two to one cash to debt ratio, which to me is, is pretty impressive. If I had two times more assets than I do debt, that to me is is something I would I would really enjoy. The third the the second company that I would have purchased if I had more money in my accounts would be Neo. So this is ticker N I U. And I actually just did a video on them, uh, I think uh, two days ago. Neo right now is at $18.25. This is a Chinese e-scooter company, but it is the market outside of China that I'm very bullish on. So in the past six months, this, this is another one that has gone up crazy. It's 114%. But remember, you guys might be like, Jose, why are you showing me these that have gone up 114%? That is not something that should scare you. I have been bullish in Spotify since $150. That's when I entered the market. I would have entered a lot sooner too if I wasn't searching at other companies. 150 was somewhere in, in late April, early early May. So I purchased in 150. Then the deal happened. People were watching. Oh, maybe I should um, watch the deal happen. It went up to $189. It went up um, about... 30% in, in since that Rogan deal. People were like, okay, I'll wait for a pullback now. I'll wait for it to go back to 150 and, and then I'll enter. Guess what? Those people that waited at 180, the next thing, another big deal happened. What happened in the other big deal? Then it started sitting at $210 or, or so. Um, that was another 20%. There was a decent drop there, but then right now, even from 200, the 200 price level, this company is still up 42%. So stock price increase should not deter you from buying a company. And if you want to wait, sure, wait. I'm, this is, like I said, not advice, but there is the risk that the pullback won't happen. And if a pullback does happen, how do you know it's going to be a better price than it is today, right? Um for example, those that did not buy um, Spotify at 150, there was a pullback down to 185, but obviously it made so much more sense buying it at 150. So for me, if I ever find a, that I might be scared a little bit about their valuation, but I still like the business, I enter with the smaller position. And then what happens to A, one, I already like the business. So if the stock price goes down, I'm not going to be a, a weak hands and sell my shares. Instead, what I'm going to do is buy more shares. If the stock price goes up, I might reevaluate and hey, I still like the business. I still like the current price. I might even average cost up. And I, I, this is to many people don't think of it this way. They wait for that pullback. That pullback might never happen. Um, what's a few dollars to me in the account when in overall, I do think the market cap is going to continue to grow. Um, so that's how I feel about Neil and Celsius. Both have gone up. There might be some crazy um, pullback. And but I'm not sure when that pullback would happen or if that pullback would even would even um, be better than the current prices. So I'm willing to enter even 
um, even to that risk. But I understand. I know I've done my analysis. I know the stock price goes down and nothing crazy has changed around the market. To me, it's just a buying opportunity. Um, so Neil, what they do, like I mentioned, they are in the e-scooter business. And this is actually a pretty cool market, especially for places like in Europe, in China, in South America, in Central America, where at the moment roads are really crowded and the easiest way to travel is by using a scooter opposed to a car. Right now, their biggest market is China, um, but they are if we take a look at their fine store we are going to see that they are look look at them this is all of europe they are big in europe right now they have also entered some of south america they are in central america and they are in parts of the united states to me the most bullish is europe and them expanding in south america because that's where i believe would be a huge market gain for them uh, right now their cur another thing is they they do have really strong partnerships you can either order them offline via the same way you go to a car dealership and buy uh, buy a car another way is they do have an online platform they have partnered with jd.com they have their own news store and they have tmall.com and thanks to a, a, a listener of this channel they informed me that tmall.com is actually owned by alibaba so some of the big guys have have their scooters online selling through omni channels which again i i think is pretty impressive one thing i do want to say about neo that's in the negative side is right now COVID 19 is affecting dramatically the overall automobile industry and this is where pretty much neo is at so i do think this will take a hit especially with the second wave or the second half of the first wave however you guys want to say um talk about it i do think that there might be some effect to neo based on that because right now people are not out really out there buying cars um, and finally, the last, and, and actually let's take a look at NEO. NEO in 2019 grew 39% year over year. In 2018 grew 83% year over year. And in 2017 grew 120%, 127% year over year. The final stock I am going to talk about is DraftKings. And DraftKings has taken a big hit lately. Um, in the past six months, it's still up about um, 206%. And right now, compared to its peak, it's actually down about 24%. So unfortunately, if you picked up at over $43, it, it, like I said, it's one of those things that pull back. But to me, even the market cap at the moment, I, I can see this being at least a double bagger for me. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I picked up around the low 20s, mid 20s. So I, I'm still in the green. But this is a position I would continue to increase. The reason I am bullish in DraftKings is even with the whole non-sports betting happening because there are no sports available um DraftKings came up with new ways to make money one of the major ways was through esports betting and that to me was actually pretty impressive most of these are contents launched launch post covid 19 call of duty fan um, um counter-strike korean baseball esports um rocket leagues um fantasy madden golden state tour fantasy a lot of fantasy betting actually occurred and the uh, esports so to me that shows me that this is a business who has a lot of great minds innovating minds that will allow um for them to create something in such a quick and such a uh, quick shift around with the whole market just shifting to me is pretty impressive another reason i am bullish in DraftKings is legal sports betting um is only available in certain states i know right now the big drop is because of california saying that it might not allow that to happen but still you have all these other states um that that um that have yet to to go through the process most of them are in the process right now um but right now only about 11 to uh, what is it i think 11 13 states are allowed um, are allowed esports betting new jersey is one of the biggest um, so, so yeah, those are reasons why I am very, very bullish in DraftKings. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. These were five different companies, two of them, Facebook and Google, which I think many people would agree with because they're top dogs. But sometimes me as a growth investor, I am more looking for those growth companies that are going to make me a five bagger, a six bagger, a 10 bagger. And I do think most of these that I mentioned today have the potential to do that. So like always, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up, and the bell. It helps the small channel out so much. And I truly, truly appreciate the support. Finally, have a happy 4th of July, guys. Um, and happy birthday to America. Take care, guys.